explain why abdominal distension is seen in heart sprung disease. Heart sprung disease is also known as a congenital megacolon or a ganglionosis. So in this condition, the entire neuronal plexuses in the wall of the colon are congenitally absent. So what happens if these neural plexuses are absent in the colonic wall? Uh, here in this picture, we can see that the digestive, this is the digestive system of our body. And here the neuronal cells or nerve cells, precursor cells, they are migrating. Okay, so uh, they are migrating from the oral end to the anal end. Now, if these nerve cells, their migration is absent at the uh, terminal part of this colon, so that condition <coughs> is known as agamblionosis or congenital megacolon. So the term agamblionosis, we know that <coughs> there is no nerve ganglion at this terminal part. But why it will result in megacolon, that we will see now. Another picture that shows that the migration of the neuronal cells or neural crest cells. So this is the primitive notochord <coughs> in the fetus. And we can see that uh, the vagal uh, enteric nervous system, it is migrating in this way. <coughs> and the sacral uh, in the enteric nervous system is migrating in this way. <coughs> okay, if the whole colon, it is fully uh, migrated or fully um, containing, contains the enteric nervous system, it is a healthy colon. But if 95% of the terminal part, if it is devoid of the enteric nervous system, then it will result in the heart from disease or the congenital megacolon. Now, why this migration or absence of ganglion cells at the terminal portion, it will result in uh, distension or megacolon. So, the enteric neurons are usually absent at the distal part of the anus and the rectum. And the failure of the, uh, migration of this neural crest cells from the cranial to caudal region results in absence of ganglion in both myenteric and the submucosal plexuses in distal part of the colon and rectum. Now, this absence of myenteric and submucosal plexuses. So, these plexuses are part of enteric nervous system, EENS. So, if these plexuses are absent, that will prevent the relaxation of rectal outlet and internal anal sphincter in response to rectal filling. So, what happens normally when the rectal, rectum fills with the feces, so there will be relaxation of the rectal outlet okay the internal anal sphincter will undergo relaxation so feces will go out but in this case as these neuronal cells are absent there will be no relaxation of the rectal outlet and internal anal sphincter will not get relaxed and what will happen then so these contracted or tonic uh, part of the rectum will cause a narrow opening or it will cause obstruction. Here in this picture, we can see that this part of the colon is agganglionic part. So, this agganglionic bowel, it tonically contracts. And this tonical contraction causes what? The functional obstruction. It is not anatomically obstructed. So, due to the spasm of this area, uh, as a result of absence of ganglion cells or the nerve plexuses, so this part of uh, the colon will undergo spasm. So that functional spasm will cause the obstruction. So this obstruction is the functional obstruction. Now if this part is obstructed, so all the proximal part will be distended with the feces. So automatically there will be distension or the megacolon. So here in this picture, we can see the typical picture of distended colon followed by a narrow part or the shrunken rectum. Okay, 
so this is a very uh, peculiar picture of Hasprung disease or congenital megacolon. Okay, so obstruction due to the functional obstruction due to the spasm of this area. So what will happen? <clears throat> Outflow of feces will be hampered. The feces will not go the expulsion. So there will be accumulation of the feces behind this part of obstruction. So this functional obstruction behind this part there will be accumulation of feces and that will result in what? This distended abdomen or distension of the abdomen. Since this is a resected gut, we can see here that this is the terminal ileal part. This is the transition zone and this is the proximal colon. This is the distal colon and you can see here this is the rectosigmoid junction and the rectum. Rectum is very small whereas beyond the rectum all the proximal part it is heavily distended. So that is the Hasprung disease or congenital megacolon or a ganglionosis. In a nutshell we can say that in Hasprung disease there will be absence of ganglion in both myenteric and submucosal flexuses in the distal part of the colon and rectum. And it prevents the relaxation of rectal outlet and internal anal sphincter. As a result of this functional obstruction, there will be obstruction of the outflow of feces and feces accumulate behind the obstruction. And as a result of this, there will be distension of the colon. So we can explain that in case of Hasprung disease, there will be abdominal distension.